Today News Update. A warm welcome to your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Monday, June 20. So glad you could join us. The 10-member Constitutional Advisory Committee is ready to get down to business. The committee charged with drafting the island's new constitution was today sworn in by acting President Reverend Jeffrey Gibson during a brief ceremony at State House. The committee will be chaired by retired High Court Judge Christopher Blackman. The other members are Suleiman Balbulia, Reverend Dr. John Rogers, Senator Gregory Nichols, former Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite, trade unionist Mary Ann Redman, businessman Christopher De Carries, attorney at law Sadie Jemot, president of the Barbados Council for the Disabled Carrie Ann Eiffel, and youth advocate Khalil Kofdiwala. Attorney General Dale Marshall told reporters the commission will start work from as early as Friday. He's expecting the widest possible consultations across the island. One of the concerns of, of both the Cox Commission and the Ford Commission was that enough Barbadians did not participate in that process. Today we have Zoom, we have all kinds of streaming platforms, uh, we, have, uh, we have a Barbadian who is well versed with what's happening because of social media and we assure you that we will be using every single avenue to reach out to Barbadians and we want them to reciprocate by getting involved in the process, participating in the meetings whether by Zoom or face to face, but let their voices be heard because this is the opportunity for them all to participate in determining how a republic Barbados looks going forward. The constitutional reform process is likely to cost the government some $1 million. The commission is expected to complete its work in 18 months. There's an 18-month time limit that we've given the commission to work. History has shown that previous commissions have had to seek extensions with the technological platforms that we have, I don't anticipate that, that that will arise in this instance because such things as transcription and recording, things that uh, back then people had to sit down at night and write and then type up, those things um, are not so much issues on this occasion. So we anticipate they will come in in that time frame. But if they need an extension, we'll give them one. But this is the beginning of the process because when the Constitution when they present to the people of Barbados a form of constitution that they believe there is consensus on, we then of course still have to, to do the parliamentary process and fine tune the drafting. So there is a time limit, but it is just the first step in a, in a parliamentary process. Tourism Minister Lisa Cummins is concerned about the void created by regional carrier layout and she is proposing a public-private sector partnership using a model of Singapore Airlines to find a solution. She was speaking today during the first ever Visit Barbados Industry Forum at the Hilton Hotel. What that does today is that it helps us to map a pathway, and we discussed this this week, for Category 1 status for our international airport, and it allows us to be able to transition also into a regional hub for international carriers. But if international carriers' colleagues are hubbing out of Barbados, they need to be able to have interline agreements that allow them to move within a region. We have to be able to have those conversations with the partners that come to the table and are willing to take the risk and to invest the capital into that transformation. We are committed to doing that. Minister Cummins also announced that moves are foot to ensure the Grantley Adams International Airport develop Category 1 status. She also revealed that Barbados is in the final stages of establishing a civil aviation authority with the regulatory framework for the Civil Aviation Bill coming soon. That I have assessed in looking at this model, in looking at what we're going to be saying today, started out with the benefit of government injection and it started out with the benefit of government support. It started out with regulatory transformation, but it evolved on the basis of an aggressive private sector taking risks, embracing technology, and being willing to be transformational. We need that balance in aviation in this region. We need it in tourism in this, in this industry, in this country. Well wishes have been pouring in for Prime Minister Mia Motley, who has tested positive for COVID-19. A government statement said it's a mild case of the virus and the Prime Minister has assured she is doing well. Doctors have advised that she will remain at home for the time being. President of the Democratic Labour Party, Dr. Ronnie Yearwood, has extended get well soon wishes to the Prime Minister. And scores of Barbadians have taken to social media to wish Prime Minister Motley speedy recovery. Regional and international news coming up after this short break. 
Pure oxygen is way more than just water. We infuse pristine water with over one billion tiny oxygen bubbles using our state-of-the-art process. The benefits of additional oxygen are huge, from strengthening your immune system to increasing energy levels, stamina, and sports performance. And that's not all. It also improves skin health, helps you sleep better, and reduces stress. Join the movement of people experiencing the benefits of Cure Oxygen. It's not hype, it's science. On the regional scene, Guyana is extending its initiative to boost agricultural production and food security to the wider Americas amid mounting concerns of global shortages. More on this report from Newsroom Guyana. This medium and long-term work is based on four strategic aspects. The strengthening and transformation of agri-food systems in the Americas, challenges and opportunities for agri-food trade in the region in the new geopolitical context, the role of science, technology and innovation, and facilitating economic and social inclusion by reinforcing the cooperative system. This support comes as Guyana is leading a similar plan in the Caribbean. The region hopes to slash its more than U.S. 5 billion annual food import bill by producing more food within the region and increasing intra-regional trade. By 2025, CARICOM hopes that at least 25% of its imports can be substituted with products from the region. Minister Mustafa, who is also chair of the CARICOM Ministerial Work Group established, spoke about the reality of the agriculture sector in this country, a strategic nation with a great capacity to become the food basket of the region. We have the land, the water, and the capital, he added. Like Guyana and other CARICOM plans, Mustafa described the alliance as an innovative way of uniting the countries and working together to ensure that they address food security. On the international front, Sri Lanka has closed schools and shut down non-essential government services for two weeks to preserve fuel supplies. This comes as the government sits down for bailout talks with the International Monetary Fund. The country is facing its worst economic crisis since the country gained independence in 1948. Crisis talks at the Prime Minister's office in Colombo. A 10-member delegation from the International Monetary Fund is in Sri Lanka to discuss a bailout package. It's the greatest crisis that we have ever had since independence. And the precursor to this is it's about 30% due to misfortune and 70% due to mismanagement. So it's a mother of all crises. And uh, if not for the IMF, there's really no other safety net that can save us. There's no money to import food, medicine, fuel or cooking gas. People have struggled with shortages for months. But things have got worse and Sri Lankans have run out of patience. <laughs> This senior policeman was filmed assaulting motorists who were demanding fuel. Army personnel fired into the air on at least two other occasions. And in this incident, protesters turned on a VIP vehicle that had jumped the fuel queue. On Monday, police arrested 21 people demonstrating outside the finance ministry for obstruction. They said it had delayed senior officials attending meetings with the IMF delegation. If approved, the rescue package will be Sri Lanka's 17th bailout from the institution. This is self-inflicted. So we have excess demand and we have had excessively loose fiscal and monetary policy that has led to this destabilization. So the discussion with the IMF are the parameters that Sri Lanka has to put in place for us to go back to a stable position. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbadistoday.bp. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on its new medium bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.